What's that? Do you want to sit through the players? Oh. Thank you, everyone. We are now ready to start the NC State portion of the press conferences. Uh, I'd like to remind you of the rules once again. There's no flash photography, no video recording. Please make sure everyone's phone is on mute. Uh, I'd also like to remind you that the locker, while the interviews are going on here, the locker rooms are open at the same time. Um, if you have a question, please raise your hand, uh, and we'll get wait for the microphone to get to you. Once you have the microphone, if you could please give us your name and your affiliate, we would appreciate that. So we'll go ahead and open up the floor for questions. Let's just start on the aisle there. Jaden Watson Fisher, News and Observer. Madison, this is obviously a special game for you. Um, mm -hmm. Your mom said a bunch of people are coming, a bunch of people yeah. in the city are kind of conflicted. Um, they, you know, obviously hometown school, but also local kid. What does it mean to know that so many people are, are excited for you and for this journey that you're on? Um, I think it's really exciting, you know, um, playing against my hometown. I usually always used to go to the UTC games. Um, men or women, so it's always cool to see that, you know, you know they're good enough to come here and play in the NCAA this year. Um, I know a couple of people on the team as well. I played them in high school. Uh, Jada Gwen, I played her in high school. Um, so it's really exciting to see, you know, playing against my local uh, college. Okay, let's just go across here on the aisle, and then we'll get you. Amalia Roy, CBS 17. Um, we're seeing so many people this season and last season, falling in love with women's basketball. How does it feel to have this record viewership and more eyes on you? Shania, could you answer that, please? Yeah, um, <clears throat> it feels really good. Honestly, I feel like it's well-deserved. Um, women's basketball is so fun. It's so entertaining to watch. And just to see that we're getting more in the same views as the men this year feels really good, especially really going into the tournament. Um, so we're excited, and hopefully the views just keep coming in. OK, in the back. Casey Hintz, WREL, for either one of you, just two weeks since that ACC championship game. What has been the biggest focus for you ladies as you've prepared for the opening tournament? Madison, could you please answer that? Um, the main focus is just really focusing on us the couple first couple of weeks, um, just really um, making sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do, fixing the mistakes that we need to fix, um, just getting ready one game at a time. Um, we're a really good team, so I feel like we'll bounce back and we'll be ready. Okay, Ernie up front. <coughs> Ernie Wolfpack Sports Radio. Um, what's the team's mindset going into this tournament as opposed to last year? Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's it's not okay. okay, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just trying to no, okay. okay. Um, yeah, now, that's a really good question. Uh, I, th I feel like it's the same as last year, just making sure we're all coming in, locked in, knowing that really it's, it's one and done. You either win or you go home, you know. Um, we've been putting in a lot of time, a lot of preparation into this, so hopefully you know it all falls in line. We're excited. I think everybody's excited, really the freshmen. They've never been dancing before in the NCAA tournament, so we're just all excited and locked in. Madison, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with what she said. Also, um, just being focused, I think that's the main thing. Just like I said before, one – game at a time. That's all it takes. And um, that'll take us a really long way. We have a really good team and our chemistry is great. So I think we're really excited for sure. Okay, Ethan, did you have a question? Yeah. Hey, Ethan McDowell from the Wolfpacker. Um, Madison, you mentioned playing against Jada in high school. Mm -hmm. Just from what you've noticed on the scouting report, what do they do well? How are they going to challenge you tomorrow? Um, they're a really good three-point shooting team. Um, one of them shoots like 60 something percent from the three, so um, which is really, really good. Um, so we just got to make sure we get out to all the shooters, um, just making sure we know our scout, know individually. Everybody's going to be guarding everybody in this game. So um, we just got to make sure we know our scout and report, know the game plan, which is, you know, we got bigs. So we got to make sure we get in into the bigs a lot. Um, 
revolve around them, inside out game. Um, so yeah. Let's <laughs> get Bob up here. Bob Sutton with the Associated Press Medicine. Were you anticipating a potential matchup with Chattanooga? Were you kind of <laughs> forecasting that it could happen? And were you as excited, or was Coach Moore as excited as you were about it? Um, I think I didn't know that we were going to play Chattanooga, honestly. I think when I seen it, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, it was just really exciting. Um, I think I looked back at Coach Moore like, oh, yeah, we're playing Chattanooga. This is your old school. <laughs> but, you know, um, I think it's exciting for both of us to play um, someone that we've been in the city and you know especially for me living there all my life um playing against some some of the uh, teams that you know that are really good so yeah up front here samantha xano with local three news in chattanooga madison you're <laughs> one of the most decorated players to come out of the area Aww. do you have a message to any of the girls back home in east hamilton or in the area Aww. who will be watching you at home oh um I think just, you know, not even just me, but Ryan Howard, which is my cousin. Um, obviously, I played her a lot in district championships. And, you know, learning from her, too, I think was the biggest thing for me. I think just, you know, just working hard. I started out late in basketball, didn't think I would be as good as I am now. I mean, going from eighth grade to now, just seeing myself now, I feel like, you know, just working hard and putting the effort in, just being a, a good role player at the time. But now, like, I'm really impactful to my team, at least I can say. So, yeah. Any other? Let's go back to Ernie. <laughs> uh, this one, Sanaya Rivers. Uh, you've been on a team that won this tournament, mm -hmm. and uh, you're one of the you know, top players in the country. And uh, how does it feel trying to get back with another team to where you were before? Is that a is that a motivation for you? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. It feels good. It felt good sliding that ring on my finger. So, <laughs> of course, I'm trying to you know get a twin ring on my finger. Um, well, especially with the team, I love coaches that I appreciate very much. Fans um, are there for us day in day out. They support us. Um, it, it would be crazy. It would be amazing. Um, so yeah, let's lock in. Yeah. Let's let's get sure. us another ring. Let's get another ring for sure. Right, let's stay on the aisle right behind. Madison, I was told that you were, what, maybe eighth grade when you told your parents that you, you, were, you were in their bedroom one night, you said, yeah. I want to be the best <laughs> player in the state of Tennessee, and, they, and then you were like, just kidding, I want to be the best player in the United States. Yeah. Do you remember that moment? And if so, you know, what do you remember about it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, my first sport was softball. I was really good um, being looked at. You know, one of the examples was Tennessee. I was getting looked at for being a catcher. Um, you know, obviously I was growing and my knees, you know, started getting a little, you know, <laughs> but um, but I just realized that basketball was just so much like up tempo and I really loved it. Um, they didn't force me into it. I wanted to do it. Um, that was something that I loved about the game and just went in there and just said I wanted to be the best player in the state at first. And then, you know, I obviously went and say, well, I think I'm really good enough to be one of the best in the country. And like, here I am, you know, so. Any other questions? Cliff, am I correct that there are no <coughs> Zoom questions? Okay. All right, ladies, thank you very much. Good luck thank tomorrow. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's roll that one. Yeah. <laughs> So Coach Moore should be starting at 12.45, so 13 minutes. That's, at least we're consistent, right? There you go.
I'm like, oh, there's a straw. I'm going to try it. And I looked pretty brain, and I was like, oh, that's disgusting. So, you know, this is going on. So I just went, that's the one thing you can do. Yeah, I was in the sports information office for five years. What year was that? 85 to 90, before you were born.
Okay. Joanna. Joanna. All right. This time around, it doesn't have a margin. Is that just because nobody's? Uh, yes. Uh, that's why you make the big bucks. Let's go to the All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for asking. That, that could have been a problem in that first one. Yeah. That's why, because that's why I asked Cliff. I was like, "Is there anybody there?" Because I don't see anything. <laughs> You ready? Coach, you ready to get started? Ready. <laughs> All right, everyone. We are now ready to begin the press conference for head coach Wes Moore. Coach, could you please start with an opening statement? Yeah, obviously we're excited about being here. Uh, I'm proud of our team for performing well enough all year to be in a host position. Uh, I think that in, in women's basketball, I think that's a big goal for everyone to be one of those top 16 seeds. And uh, so great accomplishment there. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, that doesn't guarantee you anything. Uh, obviously, you have to come out and play well. Uh, I knew 
in my mind about a week ago at least that they would probably send Chattanooga and Tennessee over here because they love a storyline. And uh, so um, not, you know, again, tough. Spent 15 years at Chattanooga. Uh, love the university, love the town, love the people. And then uh, Tennessee, Kelly and John Harper are two of my dearest friends. So not excited about, uh, you know, playing them. We, we've tried to avoid each other uh, in the past other than scrimmages. So it's uh, tough uh, from that standpoint. And then Green Bay, you know, uh, Coach Barsett, Barsett has done just an unbelievable job of that in that pro with that program for a long time. So it's a tough, tough bracket, tough draw, and I, I know we'll have to play really well this weekend. All right, thank you, Coach. If you have a question, please raise your hand, and we'll get a microphone to you. Let's start with Bob, and then we'll go there, and then we'll get you. Bob Sutton with the Associated Press. Is it just an uncomfortable thing playing against teams that you're and people that you're familiar with, or is it? You yeah, know, you kind of try to avoid it. I well, guess. I mean, uh, not not to mention that they're good. <laughs> you know, uh, all these teams are really good and well coached teams. But yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Kelly and John were on my staff at Chattanooga for I think four years, maybe something to that effect. And uh, obviously, Chattanooga, I still know a lot of people in the administration and all there. Um, you know, they gave me an opportunity to be a head coach at the Division One level. Um, but yeah, you know, and again, uh, like I said, I know all three of them are talented, well coached. Uh, but from a personal standpoint. Uh, you know, if we're fortunate enough uh, to get to that second game, uh, and again, we're going to have our work cut out for us uh, from that. But if we are, you know, you you hate to play really close friends. Okay, Smith on the aisle. Uh, Smith Casano with Local 3 News in Chattanooga. Coach Poppy mentioned the other day the impact that you've had on the Mox program. To see them back here in the tournament, to see that that legacy that you left has continued, what does that mean? Yeah, I mean, he's done an awesome job uh, and obviously watched a lot of film on them the last few days. Uh, you know, offensively, I think they're 21st in the country, offensive efficiency. Uh, you know, they've got some, for us, tough matchups. Uh, and then they shoot the heck out of it, you know. Uh, when you look at some of the numbers, they're mind-boggling. I mean, the, the two freshmen that don't start or in conference play are shooting 42 and 65% from three. Uh, that's daunting. I mean, that's scary. So, uh, you know, it's uh, – but, yes, uh, I love seeing Chattanooga uh, in this position and uh, cheer for them. Um, we did go over there and play a few years ago. Uh, it was a great opportunity. Again, 15 years, a lot of former players and all still. Uh, I've got one of them flying in this weekend, staying at the house. So, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, that too makes it a little tougher. But, uh, yeah, I mean, again, uh, proud of where they are. Let's go to Ernie up front. Uh, Ernie Myers, Wolfpack Sports Radio Coach. Uh, what is your main concern um, going into the tournament um, and your team, what, what what is the vibe of the the, the players and, and the staff going into this? Uh, well, you tell me. <laughs> uh, you had the players in here before, so you probably got a better feel for that than I do. But, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. Um, again, it's been a while since we played. And, of course, some people don't like that. I, I kind of like having that extra week. And, um, you know, we've been fortunate, I think, every year, but – Last year, it's fallen during our spring break, so we were able to give the players a few days to get away from it and and recover a little bit. And uh, But, yeah, it seems like forever now, and you're sitting here watching everybody else play. You're watching our men in their big run and then the women's games, and uh, you're thinking, man, let's go. You know, you're chomping at the bit. Uh, but, you know, again, uh, hopefully uh, – you know, we have that energy, that sense of urgency this time of year, especially veterans realize this may be their last go around. And uh, so it's, uh, you know, you got to, you got to, you got to lace them up tight and be ready to go. Okay, let's go to Ethan in the back. Hey, coach, Ethan from the Wolf Packer. Uh, obviously, you didn't get to host last year. 
now being back with potentially two games at Reynolds, just how nice is that? How much yeah. does that help to be back here? Uh, there's no doubt. It's a it's a big plus. And, again, like I said earlier, it doesn't guarantee you anything. You still got to go out and play. Uh, you know, we did. We lost one game here this year. We won three games in overtime this year. Uh, so, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's still you're playing great teams that have had, you know, really successful years. But our fans – uh, make a big difference, and uh, I think they give us a real home court advantage, and uh, we're excited about that. Uh, last year was disappointing. We had some, you know, some tough losses, and and uh, like I said, the, probably the most pressure I feel in this job is trying to make sure we get in that top 16, and it's not easy. There's a whole lot of really good teams that are playing on the road this weekend, so uh, that's why I said I'm really proud of our players for being able to put us in this position. Okay, let's go in the middle here, and then we'll get you, and then we'll go to Peter. How you doing, Coach? J.B. Ricks with uh, Spectrum News 1. Uh, forgive me if this question has already been asked, but when it when it comes to your first-round opponent, you guys already have the distractions of, you know, being here at home and, and having the fans, having the Reynolds crowd, Co Coliseum, and being expected to win. Mm -hmm. Mimi told me that you've been really hard about film as far as keeping them focused you know what I mean, on their first-round opponent right. so they don't look past. Right. Can, can you speak on that as far as yeah. what, what's been I your mean, key behind that success? I mean, we're playing a team that's lost one game since December. Uh, they beat an SEC team early in the year that's a pretty good team. Um, so you, you can't take it – I mean, again, they, there's some, they got some matchup problems because they're going to go with a, you know, a small post inside. So that's challenging for us to match up with defensively some. And I'm sure on the other end, they're going to do things to take that advantage away, such as doubling the post or uh, fronting the post, things like that. So you still got to be able to go out and execute. And then, like I said, they're unbelievable shooters from the three-point line. You know, I hadn't seen numbers like this. It's like a video game. I mean, shoot 65% from the three-point line in conference. Uh, it's scary. So I'm talking about a, a particular player, obviously. But um, – yeah, I mean, again, uh, and you're right, being at home uh, is, is tough. I think we've got nine people staying at our house, so I'm really thankful I'm in the hotel with the team this week, weekend. Uh, God bless my wife. She'll be sleeping on the couch. Uh, but, uh, you know, it is. When you're playing at home, trying to find tickets, and, you know, the NCAA controls these now, so now you're trying to buy some extra tickets and – uh, it's it's crazy, but at the end of the day, you gotta you know put your time aside and at some point put that phone away and get on that film and and make sure you're doing everything you can to prepare your team. But um, yeah, we gotta take it one game at a time. I think one of the you know one of the Twitter accounts or whatever X accounts you know 94 feet. I think they predicted this was the number one uh, possible upset us against Chattanooga. Uh, so you know we. We saw what happened last night, the men's side. Um, so you can't take anything for granted, and you got to make sure you're playing at your best and and hope you're hitting shots, and maybe they miss a few. Okay, let's go on the edge here, and then we'll get Peter over here. Hey, Coach. Brian Pertle with Pat Pride. We were talking with Madison in here, talking about where this one selection show, and y'all saw that y'all were playing Chattanooga. Y'all kind of had a moment where you're looking over at each other. It's like, okay, here we go. Can you just describe what that moment was like? Yeah, it was funny because Madison turned around and looked at me when they revealed us in Chattanooga, which I said, I, I knew that was going to happen. I knew based on the numbers they were going to do that because they love doing this stuff. And then before they revealed the other half of our little bracket here, I said, get ready because Tennessee's fixing to pop up too. And sure enough, there it came. And so, um, yeah, for her, a Chattanooga girl, and, and again – uh, there'd be a lot of people say I'm a Chattanooga guy, uh, spending 15 years there and it was unbelievable. And, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's good to see them back in the tournament and, and winning championships, thing, things like that. Um, but, uh, obviously you got to put all that aside and, and focus on the job at hand, including Madison has to do that as well. So let's go to Peter over here. Here at Catropus Triangle Sports Network, um, Wes, I asked Kelly the same question here. You've both been coaches of, like, mid-major programs, Chattanooga's, Missouri State, Green Bay's. She talked about the coaching mindset that, you know, when you cover those – when you have those types of programs, 
that there's a us against the world kind of chip on your shoulder. But now that you know you you both have gotten to that higher level, so to speak, in terms of exposure, is there a difference in your coaching mentality uh, with a program like uh, NC State uh, versus you know what could be a mid major or yeah. however we? Define I, I don't it? know. Uh, I'm a grinder. You know, and, and that probably this time of year probably doesn't help me much because they, they're probably sick of hearing me after about four or five months, and I understand. Uh, but, you know, I prepare the same way. And, you know, it's still, you know, the scout, the film, uh, going over things in practice. Um, I mean, it's still, still basketball, still the same thing. So, uh, you know, uh, I had one of my former players from Chattanooga who's a high school coach now text me this morning, and, and she said that. She said, is it hard getting them to focus? Because with us, we were always the underdog and excited for the opportunity to knock somebody off. Um, and I, I do get that. That's probably a little bit, you know, freer, less pressure. You know, I think at that level, your pressure is the conference tournament because you've got to win the conference tournament no matter what you've done all year. So that that used to be the most pressure in the world on me was the tournament weekend because uh, you won the regular season. You're supposed to just roll out and win the tournament too. And uh, only one team's going. So, you know, for them, they've kind of lived that pressure and survived it. So now they're, you know, ready to, you know, go for it. So, you know, I think um, – you know, our biggest win when I was at Chattanooga in the tournament was beating uh, Rutgers when they had uh, uh, Cappy Poindexter and I don't know, all, some of the – they had a great team and, um, you know, legendary coach, Hall of Fame coach up there. So, um, you do uh, – I think you do kind of play with house money a little bit, you know. And uh, they look to me very confident in the conference tournament and uh, I'm sure they'll bring that with them. Any other questions? Once, twice. Oh, here we go. Back in. Um, Cora Hall with Knox News. I saw you got to chat with Kelly and John a little bit on the court earlier. Was it nice to just get to connect with them before everything starts, before you're potentially facing them on the court? Yeah, I mean, I went and, you know, John and I were texting, and I went and picked him up last night when they got to the hotel, and he and I went and hung out, and he ate – I'd already eaten with the team, but he ate dinner and we watched basketball for a little while. Like I said, they're two of my dearest friends and, um, you know, it makes it tough. But, again, <laughs> we got to get to them, you know, and, and I made that clear to him too. I mean, we – you know, heck, uh, Chattanooga is a very good team and Green Bay is a very good team. We both have work to do. But, yeah, um, you know, on, on one hand it's great to see them and visit with them a little bit. On the other hand, you know, I wish they weren't here, you know. But, um, you know, we're no matter what happens on that court, it's not going to change anything. And like I said, they're two of my dearest friends, and, um, you know, I love them. So, but we both have to set all that aside. And if we get there, again, I, I don't want to – like I said, right, our focus has been on Chattanooga. And uh, obviously – we got coaches preparing for Tennessee and Green Bay both. Uh, but in practice and all, our focus has been on uh, this first game. And that's what you got to do at this time of year, uh, one at a time. Any other questions? All right, Coach, thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you, thank you. And, you know, my first six years, I was at Maryville College. <laughs> yeah, and Pat Summit lived right down the road. and. I used to go watch her practice all the time and work her camps. And so I got a lot of the ties back there. <laughs> Next press conference, 205 Green Bay. The media lunch is open till 2 at the far end of the building.